What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today we are in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. I'm here to talk about the Bever family massacre that occurred in this very neighborhood. And I'm also gonna take you to the exact location where those murders occurred. In this neighborhood lived a family of nine, the Bever family. It was David Bever who was the father, April, his wife, and they had seven kids, Robert, 18, Michael, 16, Crystal, 13, Daniel, 12, Christopher, 7, Victoria, 5, and Autumn, 2. If you talk to the neighbors and ask them about the Bever family, well, there's really not much they would be able to tell you because the family was somewhat secretive. They didn't talk to really any of their neighbors. Uh, their neighbors next door to them said he never seen them come outside. He never seen the kids playing outside. They never talked to him. They would wave hi here and there and that's about it. And in his own words, he preferred it that way. I guess you can call them the perfect neighbors. A lady across the street would say the uh, mother, April, uh, was, quote, a mother hen, very uh, watched over of her children, very, very protective. But inside that home, however, depending on who you want to believe, uh, rumblings were happening, uh, different things, if you will. The family talked a lot about the Bible and about prophecies and about the world ending, so forth and so on. The kids were homeschooled. They were really not allowed to play with other children. And like I said, the neighbors wouldn't really see those kids outside doing anything. So the oldest son, Robert Bever, 18, he had a job not too far from here at a call center. And while he was in his room, even though they weren't really allowed to associate with other people, um, inside the home, there, there was ample access to the internet. And on his two laptops, Robert would search up serial killers, mass shootings. He was obsessed with the Columbine school shooting there in Colorado. And, uh, in his mind, he wanted to be a thrill killer, a serial killer. He wanted to kill as many people as he could. And he would often share his fantasies with his brother, Michael, two years younger than him, looked up to big brother. And I guess he wanted to do what his big brother wanted to do. So they were sitting around and talking and they wanted to hatch a plan to kill people. So the plan was that they were going to buy full-on body armor suits. They were going to buy some guns online, ammunition, have it delivered, and then they would take off from Oklahoma, start heading towards Washington. They would uh, stop in any random location and kill five people. That's what they needed to do. Kill five people each location, keep going, keep going, keep traveling until they get to Washington State. So Robert, of course, being employed, he saved up his money and purchased some guns and were gonna have them delivered to a gun store uh, here in town. However, he ordered about 3,000 rounds of ammunition. I don't know why, but that was, bring, that was being delivered to the house. And of course, if his father sees 3,000 rounds of ammunition being delivered, he's gonna ask what the hell's going on. And he could not find out about it, nor his mother, nor none of the family. So they decided, well, hey, if we're gonna go on a kill spree, let's just start right here. We can't let them know that the ammunition is being delivered on the 23rd. So let's just kill them on the 22nd. And then we'll chop up their bodies put them in boxes, hide them in the attic, and then we'll get our ammunition. It's uh, really as simple as that. July 22nd, 2015, the plan is hatched. Tonight's night, we gotta do it. 
They were not able at the time to get their guns delivered to the gun shop, but however, they did acquire some knives online that they were going to use to commit the murders. So around, maybe they're thinking about maybe right before 11 p.m. on that night, Crystal Bever, she was 13 years of age. Robert told her, hey, come in here in my room. I want to show you something on my laptop. She goes in his room, and as she's looking, he comes up from behind her and slits her throat ear to ear. She starts screaming, and then they start fighting. She tries to escape the house. She runs downstairs, and he follows her down there, and all hell is about to take place. Crystal's attempt to escape the house is in vain because Michael is waiting for her and starts stabbing her. She's screaming. April, the mother, comes running downstairs seeing what's going on. Everyone's screaming. Robert takes a knife from the kitchen and stabs his mother to death. Michael, attacking Crystal, starts choking her until she's unconscious and then drags her body from the foyer of the house back inside. The other children, hearing screaming and yelling, they all scatter. And as Robert is holding the knife, his father comes running downstairs screaming, what are you doing, what are you doing? And as soon as he gets down to the bottom, Robert just starts stabbing him in his chest repeatedly, repeatedly. And David, the father, says, quote, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. And Robert simply replies, yes, I do. After he's dead, Michael goes to the bathroom where two of the Bever children are hiding seven-year-old Christopher and five-year-old Victoria. Michael is pounding on the door. Help, help, Robert's gonna kill me, let me in, help. He's trying to kill me. They open the door to let their brother in, unbeknownst to them that he was behind the attacks. He kicks in the door and right there just brutally murders his brother and his sister. After they're dead, they start looking for 12-year-old Daniel. They're checking all the rooms. Daniel, hearing what was going on, ran into his father's home office and called 911. They kick in the door. He tells his brother, I love you. Please don't, as he stabs him to death. Their brutal reign of terror and murder in their own family home is now complete. But little did they know that Daniel got that 911 call. So 911 operators receive a 911 call from 709 Magnolia Court. Uh, but there's nothing on the other end. Nobody's answering. So they send a police unit over there to investigate and as they approach the house, they see two individuals running into the woods behind the house. So immediately the officer radios for backup, goes into the house and just discovers the horrible carnage in front of him. I imagine the officer that responded to the scene could not believe his eyes. There's blood everywhere. Crystal is laying on the floor, blood all over her, unconscious because she's still alive. He starts checking all the rooms. He sees two kids, blood all over the bathroom floor. What remains of seven-year-old Christopher and five-year-old Victoria. He goes into another room and he sees Daniel, 12-year-old Daniel, dead. Blood everywhere. April and David Bever are also dead in the house. He's radioing for backup. I got bodies here. 
Roll medic, roll paramedics. And he goes to another room and he sees two-year-old Autumn Bever in her crib, sleeping, unharmed. They go into the woods with canine, searching for these individuals, and it was not terribly hard to find them, being that they didn't have any shoes on, and they were quickly arrested. When the officers seen them, they took photos of them, because as you can see in the pictures, uh, they got on body armor, and they're covered in blood. Uh, they are subsequently arrested and taken down to the station and asked what happened. And well, they said that they killed her family. And that's all there was to it. About a week later, they were both charged with five counts of first degree murder. Uh, there was a question about 16-year-old Michael being charged as an adult, and of course, he was. Robert was the first one to plead guilty just so he could avoid the death penalty, and uh, he received five life sentences plus the 28 years or so for the attack on Crystal. And... Of course, right you see in front of you is 709 Magnolia Court, or what is left of it. Uh, this is where the family home used to stand. Um, after the brutal attack, the house was empty for uh, a few years. Um, the city council finally had raised, or they were trying to get some uh, kind of uh, fundraising event to be able to buy the home from the mortgage holder bank, whose name was on the deed. And suspiciously after that, somebody set the house on fire. And uh, that was it. After the house was set on fire, it was uh, bulldozed and cleared. And then the city made a park out of it. Reflection Park. And uh, this is it. This is the site of that horrible, horrible tragedy. It's all that's left. It looks like there's a sign right here. Welcome to Reflection Park. While I was taking notes for the story, I was parked in this very parking lot at this business here called Micotech, which is a call center. And little did I know, uh, this was the exact place that Robert Bever worked at, where he was saving up his money to buy the full body Kevlar suit, to buy the guns and to buy the ammunition. Yeah, I guess you could just call it dumb luck. Anyways, uh, currently uh, Robert Bever and his brother are both locked up at the Joseph Harp Correctional Center. It's a couple hours away from Broken Arrow. And in the summer of 2019, Robert Bever attacked uh, three prison officials with some kind of a sharpened object. And as you can see, judging from the picture, I try not to judge people's looks or appearances but I would say that there is some kind of extracurricular activity going on behind bars that I don't want to know about. I guess you can say he's getting his just desserts, if you will. Anyways, I do not know where the family is buried. I've looked all over online and to no avail. Uh, it appears that the burial location of the family was kept under wraps. David Bever did have a mother that lives in Florida. She's around 84, 85 years of age. And it could be quite possible that maybe they were cremated and she has their ashes or they were just buried somewhere else. Who knows? 
Anyways, rest in peace to the Bever family, a horrible tragedy that occurred and that was brought on by two monsters. Since Michael Bever was 16 at the time of the crime, believe it or not, even though he was sentenced to five life sentences, just because he was under the age of 18, he is actually eligible for parole in 2054. By that time, he will be 54 years of age. And there's going to come a time where he goes up to the parole board, 75 years of age. People forget, is he going to get out? Hopefully not. Hopefully both those little bastards will spend the rest of their stinking pathetic lives in some little concrete room with no sunlight. I don't know. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. You think that guy will get out or who knows? Anyways, uh, I'm out of here, guys. I am going to the next story. There's always a story wherever, wherever I travel, wherever I go. Anyways, guys, I'll catch up with you later. God bless. Peace out.